Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Behind the Likes. I'm Winter. And I'm Shy. And today we are talking about some serious things. Uh, is it serious? Yeah, we don't even have no cards. You know how we always have our little no cards? And I unbutton my pants. Uh, so if you see my pants unbuttoned, don't judge, okay? I'm gonna tuck it in. That's fine. Um, and I had it on the same thing I had on yesterday. She's dirty. <laughs> But uh, so we are basically addressing the backlash that I have faced on Twitter for the last few days. Um, we decided that we were going to talk about it on the podcast. We we're going to talk about something completely different. And we decided that we are going to address everything. And also, I just want to say this is the last time that I'm going to be addressing everything like Everything, like all of the receipts that people think they pull on me, I'm going to address all of the receipts and um, talk about some things that maybe are controversial. And I just want to say, fuck you if you don't like it. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> what are your thoughts on the whole situation that's been going on Twitter for the last couple of days? So I feel like you should start from the from every from the beginning. Just like some people probably don't know what's going on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So some people may just tune in the podcast. They don't know the rest of the world. They don't know anything. So I think you have to start yeah. from everything, not just the Twitter. Right. From when you were on the live. I didn't even know until after you had tagged, then I was like, ooh, what's going on? Yeah. So you know, so, you know what I'm saying? So some people may miss out on things. So you need to address, you gotta address it from the jump. The yeah. Start. Shy didn't know what was going on really online. Oh yeah, because we kinda low key. <laughs> We kind of got into a little I don't have tiffy. a tweeter. Yeah. We so, got into a little, not a, an argument, but just a little. It was some girl shit. It's I'll literally tell you like we happened. both got an attitude. So it's like, what you want to do? I'll tell you what happened. So basically I was dealing with like the internet stuff all day. And then Shy was supposed to come over at two o'clock. No, to, I said three. You said two. I said three. I can pull up the text. I said two. No, take that back. Three. I never saw three. I could pull it up. But um So can I. So <laughs> Shy came to my house and she was like, um, she's hungover, which is okay, but I had to add that. She goes into my kitchen, she's like, I'm hungry, blah, 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 normal. I keep on I'm on Twitter, like dealing with all the stuff that I'm dealing with. And she comes in the house and then she's like, you know, she's chilling. I'm on Twitter, hella mad. And then she comes and sits down on the couch. She's like, Well, what are you doing? Okay, we gotta do this. And I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm like, you just got here. Like, what are you talking about? She's like, okay, well, clearly you have an attitude, so we can do this another day. I'm like, okay. She gets up and she leaves. So I didn't, I didn't know the severity of like the whole situation. I didn't know, like, I'm like, it's another day on Twitter. She's, she's a goddamn troll herself. So I'm thinking it's just some simple shit. So I'm just like, okay. I, so I'm like, okay, what are we doing? I didn't looked in the refrigerator. It took about a good five minutes in there, and she's still on the phone. So I'm like, she's like, they dragging me on Twitter. I'm like. In my head, I'm like, oh, nothing new, whatever, she's right. fine. So like, I'm like, okay, I give it a second. Then again, I'm like, okay, what are we doing? Because I, I was hungover. And she had an attitude. I did. I was like, okay, you made me drive all the way over here. It was I traffic. Drive, make her drive anywhere. She lives across the street from me. She decided to not be home. But anyways, so then she left and then it was a whole thing. And then she, anyway, she saw every, anyway. she saw everything on Twitter and then texted me. was like, I'm sorry. I just saw everything. Blah, blah, and I blah. didn't really want to apologize, but I did because you was going through more stuff. Yeah. And I definitely wasn't going to apologize. But anyways, let's just get to the subject. So basically, if you guys don't know, months ago, we kind of talked about it when uh, last year, when I had like gone through some stuff on social media. Oh, yeah, media. we did talk about that. Yeah, I gone through some stuff on social media regarding my race and people basically like, it's like, my race is like a huge controversial thing for people. I don't really fully understand why, but people are definitely 100% obsessed with it. They think they have like receipts on me that I lie about my race, which they don't. I've already addressed everything that people possibly has said, um, but we're going to do it again on the podcast. This will be the last time that I address this situation. Um, and it just is what it is. You hear it or you don't. So... I was on TikTok. I had made a video. It was actually a clip of the podcast and it went viral and some girl commented on it and was like, talk about how you be lying about your race. So to me, that obviously is like a triggering thing for me because I've already gone through this. I've already addressed this. Like it's it's been debunked and mm -hmm. here we go again. So I basically went to her page, found her boyfriend's page, DM'd her boyfriend and I was like... <laughs> Yeah, I'm about to be extra petty. You want to be petty? Let's be petty. DM'd her boyfriend and he responded in the DM at 5 a.m. in the morning. And I was like, gotcha, bitch. 
<laughs> so obviously uh. I posted the video like you have bigger fish to fry. You're over here leaving hate comments on my TikTok of things that have already been addressed. You're just trying to be funny, trying to be mean, trying to be evil. So let's see if you need to deal with bigger things, which she does. And she did. She's trying to lie and say it was her in the DM the whole time. It was not her in the DM. If it was you in the DM, she would have responded and be like, girl, you thought she was going to DM my man. Yeah, or you like thought some, you ate. Right. You thought you ate. No, he responded and he was hot and ready like a little <laughs> scissors pizza. OK, so. <laughs> And I could have kept it on one too. Like I could have been talking back and forth with mm -hmm. him and like said some inappropriate stuff and really got it. But I was like, a response you know he, is enough. You know he would have been 1000% ready. That girl did not A hundred percent. And I was like, um, first of all, if I if a girl DMs you high handsome, people are trying to say, he didn't really say nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. If a girl DMs you high handsome and you respond and he's like, hey, how are you? Uh, that's, that's to me, you're, you're cheating. You're, it's all inappropriate. Don't, yeah. don't even, don't even open it let it be yeah seen. what no. like you're come on let's be so for real so it starts going viral obviously and you know the whole bandwagon of well you do be lying about your race can happens. i interject real quick i thought it what i seen because i didn't see all that twitter stuff i seen when on site posted something that you said on your live because you know you'd be on your live a lot mm -hmm. and yeah. So that's what I thought it was. I was like, oh, whatever. No, be... it wasn't that. Because I thought the video of the guy, like the video that you are talking about now was fucking hilarious. Oh, I know. That was, was so was funny. so funny. I know. I thought it was hilarious. I, I really did eat though. I ate that up, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I ate that up. Like, <laughs> ah! People are trying to say, oh, she thought she ate. I did. No, you really And did. I left no crumbs. Yeah. I licked the plate, bitch. Like, be so for real. Like, I DM'd her man and he responded, you should be embarrassed. I don't care what. Yeah. I don't care how no. many people are against me. I, that was hilarious. That was hilarious. That was so funny. That's literally, no. Because you thought you ate? No. Let me show you how, how you clean a plate no. <laughs> <laughs> i got an appetite judge Give me life. <laughs> right so anyways shade room ended up posting the video and then all the bandwagoners come out with the whole you do be lying about your race mm -hmm. thing and i just want to address like a few things that people try to say i like the the proof that they have that i'm lying about the are my race so basically when i first did bad girls club you they do like a pre-interview and it's like a zoom call um, and it was a Zoom call. This is keep on. This is my first time doing any like TV stuff for real. And I was nervous and I was saying, y'all know how much I say like now. So I was on there and I was like, like, um, like, um, mm -hmm. and me and the person who was interviewing me and my mom, we were having a whole conversation about the problems that I face being biracial. The lady who was interviewing me was even uh, she was relating to me because she was like, yeah, my husband is biracial. He's white passing as well. He goes through the same thing that you go through. The conversation was long. I want to say it was like 20, 30 minutes that we're talking mm -hmm. about my race. They decided to edit this clip. And basically the clip sounds like I'm saying, oh yeah, I'm white, but I'm from the hood. So I'm like biracial or something. I don't remember the exact words, but the clip does sound bad because I did listen to it for the first time last year. And I was like, ooh. Like, mm -hmm. and then I listened to it and I was like, okay, I see why it sounds bad. It's the words that I'm adding, the editing that they did. Mm -hmm. Like, if you guys have heard anything about reality TV or way, the way editing is, it's detrimental. They can put your words yeah. together. You can say whatever. And if you're using filler words like, like, um, and whatever, mm -hmm. it sounds bad, but that's not what I was saying. I was not saying, oh, I'm white, but I'm from the hood. So it's like, I'm biracial. No, that is <laughs> that literally makes no sense. I would never think that in my life. I've never felt that way. I've never thought that. I've never thought, oh, I'm half black because I was raised in black culture. No, I'm half black because my father is black. He doesn't he is not a biracial man. That's another rumor. Oh, he isn't? No. Oh. What? <laughs> Girl, you just saw you just met my grandma and you have seen pictures of my granddad yeah. who just passed away. But isn't he light skin? Who my dad? Yeah. Yeah, my dad's light skinned. Oh, yeah. but both of his parents are Yes. Both of my dad's parents are black. I've been spreading false information. Oh God, girl, what? <laughs> <laughs> Look, she's the way, a culprit. <laughs> the way I would explain it is my sister is light skinned and mm -hmm. my nephews are like you. Yeah. My nephews are very white passing and my mm -hmm. sister is light skinned, but she her baby daddy is white. And no. they look Lit they look nothing at us. So that's what I was Yeah, no, that is not the case with Oopsie. me. That is not the case with me. Even I don't know you guys. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Both of my grandparents are black. And 
my father is black. He is not mixed race. Um, they also say my dad is actually my stepdad, which is, I don't even know who made up that rumor, but people genuinely believe that rumor. There's like a YouTube video about how he's my stepdad and blah, blah, blah. And somebody was like, there's a real picture of your real white father. I'm like, what? Who is it? Who, what white man? Send me the photo. Who are you guys saying is my father? That's not my dad. My dad is a black man. That's not my dad. Yeah. You're not my dad. <laughs> but, um, yeah, my dad's not biracial. My stepdad, my stepdad is not black. My, my biological father is a black man. Both of his parents are black whatever uh you don't even have a stepdad do you i know i don't have a stepdad my mom was never married my mom has been a single mom my whole life i've never lived with a man in the house i've never experienced what it felt like to have a father or a stepfather i don't have no father figure okay so um they making up these lies like they're getting paid no they make up lies and the thing that pisses me off the most like on twitter somebody will be like oh my god what i thought she was a light-skinned woman or i thought she was mixed and somebody will be under it like Nope, that's her stepdad and her real dad is black. And, and I'm like, who are you spreading this false information? Like, it it just drives me crazy. And And then, like, the biggest thing for me is when people with followers on Twitter feed into it, too. It's 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 hurtful because it's like, you know, kind of what it feels like to have followers mm. And you know what it feels like to have people talk about you and say things and f spread false information. So it's like, it doesn't matter really what I say, what comes out of my mouth, whatever y'all say is just the truth. Yeah. I'll, and I've stopped posting pictures of my family. I've stopped posting pictures of my grandparents. I've stopped posting pictures of my dad because first of all, I don't fuck with my dad. And for my grandparents, first of all, my granddad just passed away last year. And my grandmother, like, I don't feel like it's fair for ha to have her face yeah. spread all over the world to yeah. just prove like, oh, yeah, this is my black grandparent. It feels corny to me. And I don't feel like I have to do that. I've already done it. Like, yeah. I've already done it. So to me, it's just like it's a slap in the face. I want to constantly. Yeah. To constantly have to pull up pictures. I want to show you guys something. And, and this is when I knew how delusional people were. This is a photo that this is a photo right here of you could barely see it because my it's me and my mom are so white. But this is a photo of my white mother and me. This is the day that I was born, right? Somebody posted this picture on Twitter and said, this is a white woman. This is a white woman. Her her mom is white. She's a white woman. This is the picture they used, right? This is the picture that they edited out. They edited my dad out. They edited my father out of the photo. Zoom in on that. They edited <laughs> my father out of the photo. <laughs> They use that picture to just be hateful. To that is say insane. that I am not biracial. And they edited my father out of the photo. That's. And I'm just like, when I seen that, my heart dropped. And I was like, these are this is the type of people that I'm dealing with. Y'all yeah. want me to be a liar. Y'all don't care about the facts. Y'all don't care that you know that it's not true. Mm -hmm. You just want to spread this false information. And the reason why I feel like that happens so much is because I've said it before. I feel like biracial people are the only people that it is okay to be racist towards because we do not have a community of people that band together and stick up for each other. Mm -hmm. Most biracial people are trying to fit in somewhere. Some mm -hmm. biracial people choose their white side. Some biracial people choose their black side. Instead of being a community of our own type of people, there are biracial people that have identity issues and mm -hmm. they want to be accepted by the black community so bad that they don't care about shitting on themselves. An example of that is the way that a lot of mixed people come on the internet these days and say, well, you know, if you have a black mom and a white dad, you're a different type of mix. You're really black then. That is biracial people needing acceptance from mm -hmm. the black community. That is a biracial per person basically crying out for I want some type of community to back me mm. because we don't have that. Some biracial people do choose to go by black and that's okay. You can choose to go by black if you want to. When we as biracial people choose to go as biracial, that is when the black community gets mad that we are not proud of our blackness. So it's kind of like a double ended, a double ended sword. Either you claim that you're black and people are going to question you or you don't claim that you're black 
and you're not proud of who you are. So that's just what it is. That's just, you know. I was about to take some water. Have some water. <laughs> it was getting that's real. It. it was getting deep. I mean, it's true, honestly. Yeah, and I can understand that from your perspective. Um, and I can see that, and I see that a lot. And I just feel like it's just so interesting in the black community that that is still a thing. And mm -hmm. I just feel like I wonder if white people are being like, you're the red white. I'm the yellow white. No. I'm the white white. You no, know what I'm saying? It not. just doesn't seem. Let me tell you why they're not. Because white people have not experienced racism in America. The reason why there is so much colorism and racism and all of that in America is because of obviously slavery, Jim Crow laws, you know, segregation, all that. Mm -hmm. Colorism is so deep rooted that it goes back to when when there were biracial people way back in the day. Yeah. You feel me? When when it was way back in the day and segregation was a thing and people how your mom just talked about it. Mm -hmm. People could people could choose to pass as white back in the yeah. day. And y'all got to read this book. The Vanishing Half It's about two twins who are like uh, not me to point at you. No, go ahead. It is like, it's like two twins who are white passing and they both choose two different lives. One mm -hmm. decides to like leave her black family behind and, you know, marries a white man, has a white kid, like does not like completely cuts off her black family and the other one of course she had a black man but her life ended up being completely different like her man beat her ass she had a child that mm -hmm. was like extremely uh dark skin and like she had to move back home like it was just a whole thing and it mm -hmm. just shows you how people can portray like how people can perceive their life you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying like, people want to move forward what would my mom call it passe blanc passe, passe blanc it's like when when you want to pass as white. When you want to pass as white. Yeah. And that's what she called it in Louisiana. So it's like when you want to pass as yeah. white. Back in the day, it's like people could choose to, I guess, quote unquote, have a better life mm -hmm. and be white passing and, you know, be light skinned and try to, you know, get by. And I feel like. Probably but it's all still because of survival. No, me, yeah, yeah. That's what it was from but to me back, back in, in the day. back in the day, obviously, like there was things where people are going to look at that person and be like, oh, you think you're better than me mm -hmm. because you can pass and this, that, and the third. And I for sure feel like that is something that goes on today. I feel like when you're a mixed person or a biracial person, people will, even if you're not colorist, even though, even if you're not racist, even if you don't have these thoughts, people will look at you and be like, oh, you think you're better or something? And it's like, no. That's just deep rooted. I with, don't. Sometimes what they've been taught as That's well. some deep rooted shit right there. That's some deep rooted shit that comes from colorism and racism in America. And it's sad to see that so many people to this day they feed into it, but they don't even know they're feeding into it. Yeah. I literally had somebody tweet me and say, oh, what you think? Cause you're, you, uh, you're, you got green eyes and Ooh. you got light skin, something like something, something you think you're prettier than her. I never said I was prettier than anybody because of my skin color or my eye color. I don't think that way. That's not yeah. how the fuck my mind works. Just period. It's not. But is that how yours works? Yeah. Is that why you're attacking me? Because mm -hmm. you think that I'm some ignorant bitch that that maybe you have come across in the past? Because there are light skinned women like that. There are light skin. There are light skinned women who are raised to say to think black girls gonna hate you. They gonna yeah. hate you, like you know, because which also is an ignorant train of thought as well. Yeah, of course. But that is instilled in you. Like mm -hmm. it is. It's, I had you know mixed friends before in the past that it's like have I mean they have gone through that like they really have gone through that gone like through what? oh because I'm pretty I ain't light skin people mm -hmm. are jealous of me I just don't like when um I can I can understand that and my mom she grew up in literally like she grew up in a very small town and mm -hmm. she obviously looks like me and like you know it was just very different in the south and dealing with that like she has stories of where like she had these three friends that would comb her hair every night after every day after school mm -hmm found out that a razor was attached to it. Yep. So slowly and surely cutting off her hair back then. It is what it is. Yeah. But I mean, so it exists. I can understand that logic, but I can't stand when light-skinned women use it as a clutch of being like, mm -hmm. I'm light-skinned. This is me. This right. is all this and that. Girl, nobody gives a fuck because I done seen some bitches that look very busted and disgusted right. and they think just because they like skin they get a pass so it's right. not i'm not here to be an advocate for mm -hmm. anybody i have mm -hmm. my own personal stories my own experiences and if you can relate to them great if you can't it's just not for you and that's how i feel right i mean to, not, uh -huh. to me personally like i don't feel like 
I get jealousy because I'm light skinned yeah. because I got green eyes. You yeah. know, I don't think that I get jealousy because of that. I think that I get jealousy because I'm that bitch. And I do. And I do. And I'm going to really just come on here and say right now, a lot of people that attack me and try to drag me down is because they have nothing else to hold on to. The only thing that y'all can say is that. Well, I'm lying about my race. If I was going to lie about my fucking race, why wouldn't I pick something more believable? Like what I, I could sit up here and lie and say I'm Indian and white and people would believe that before I sat up there and lie and say I'm black and white. Like that just doesn't. It's just not. And then people try to sit here and say, oh, you only are black when it's convenient for you. When? When has it? When is that ever going to be convenient for me? I, is there like a line that I'm showing up in every day and only if you're part black, you can get in. I've never I don't like it's never convenient for me. Also, I want to address the fact that I was in. Well, I was a replacement member for the group White Girl Mob. They bring that up, too. Oh, you were in a group called White Girl Mob. You're going to sit here and say that you're not white. Yeah, I am. I'm going to sit here and say that I'm not white because I'm not white. I'm a biracial woman. Like, I don't know what to tell you. When I was growing up, I grew up in the Bay Area. Some of y'all know, some of y'all don't. I became a stripper at 17 years old. I went through a lot of shit in my life. I had, I was homeless. I didn't, you know, have shit. I didn't know what I was going to do with my life. I didn't finish high school. I knew I wanted to be a rapper. I did music. So there was White Girl Mob that came out of the Bay Area, which is the Gucci, Gucci, Louis, Louis, Fendi, Fendi. You were part of that song? No, I wasn't on that song. The replacement. See, yeah. I wasn't even on the song. So I became a part of the group when they replaced Little Debbie in the group. And I came in the group. And I remember being like, well, I'm not white, but I'm in the group. Like, you and me, I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't give a fuck. I don't care what nobody says. And I don't care about nobody's opinion. You would do it too for a check. I can't make nobody <laughs> change the name of their damn group. It's already established. They're already <laughs> famous. You think that me, a homeless fucking teenager who has to go use a fake ID and a fake social security card to go strip and make money to get out of my situation. You think that I'm not about to go be a part of the hottest rap group that's coming out of the Bay area right now because. And it was after that song. Yes. That was a pop. And I, and I traveled with them and I performed with them and I was a part of their group until it ended. I and didn't never make a dollar off of it. It really didn't do shit for my life. But at the time my thought process was mm -hmm. this could change my life. You get what I mean? And I don't care what nobody says. If you ain't never had to be a hustler and a survivor, I don't want to hear shit. When White Girl Mob was facing all the back, black backlash for using the N-word, like, I, I don't, count me out, bitch, because I can say what the fuck I want to say. I'm black and white. Mm -hmm. That didn't have shit to do with me. Like, that's, and, and also, I want to add to that, I've never been the type of person to just sit there and let white people be racist around me. Like yeah. I've, I've checked many a people back in my day or if, even to this day, if I have to check a motherfucker for saying something racist or saying something ignorant because they think, oh, I'm white passing or I'm Mexican or they can say what they want because I'm one of them. That has never, ever flown over here. I want to make that clear. I've never been anti-black. I was raised pro-black by a white woman. So the fact that I get attacked so much by a community that I literally support, I love, it's my culture. I was raised in it. It hurts, it genuinely hurts. I don't know what it feels like to have a community. I don't have the white community. I don't have the black community. I don't have nobody that's gonna ride for me. Biracial people are scared to fucking speak up. Nobody has an experience that we have in our, like you'll never know what it feels like. If you're white, you don't know what it feels like. If you're black, you don't, you don't know what it feels like. You do not know what it feels like to not feel like you have a group of people that you are a part of. <laughs> you have anything to say? Oh, do I have anything? Oh. First of all, also oh, I want to say no Shy is not biracial. So she don't really I know, and I'm just hearing her perspective on it. So it's like, I mean, I am She's gone through so you've gone through I've stuff. Gone through things. What about when people called you Sarah when you had the braids? <laughs> that girl ended up apologizing because I was like, that kind of hurted me. But um she honestly, she was just like, I was just trying to get a reaction. Like people obviously know I'm black. So I I mean, it, when I was younger, I did feel like a little like, can I say this? Can I do that? I was like, what would they think of me? But like, I don't know, just the way that I was just raised and everybody I was around, I never felt like kind of like out of place. I never felt like, yeah. I just never really felt out of place. And then my my family is so 
we so many different colors. Like I have four older sisters and we all little we look alike. We're all we all you can tell we sisters in a room full of a thousand people, you'll point us out. But we all are different shades. One of my sisters, uh Sherry, we call her Sug because she's literally like she has this pretty beautiful complexion of like brown sugar. Mm. So it's little it's just like I mean, I I am aware. I'm aware of how I look. I'm aware of the stereotypes. I'm aware of society. But I mean, I don't choose to be bound to what society places on me. So mm. I just am like, yeah, like I said earlier, everybody has their own different perspective and their own story. Because I can't speak for anyone else. I can't speak for how you feel. I can't speak for how mixed people feel. I can't speak for how brown skinned women feel. I can't speak for them. I can only speak for me. So I'm just like, I've, of course, experienced things as being a light-skinned woman, but at the end of the day, I do also feel like I'm not afraid to speak on it, but it's just like, after a while, don't nobody want to hear about how hard I had it being right. so beautiful growing up. You know what I'm saying? So She always that's saying just... how beautiful I am. <laughs> no, I mean, that's another thing. Like, yeah, that's another thing I said. That's not to say, times, like, man. oh, how beautiful I am. Like, I know, but I know, and I know you don't mean it in that way, shape, or form, but you have a different story than me growing up. My grandmother is extremely fair. Mm -hmm. But she was black as ever. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she had, like, she that's was a black Louisiana, woman. That's Louisiana, though. That's yeah, how that's it is Yeah, that's Louisiana. So, and, like, I, my grandfather was a black Frenchman. And my dad, my mom is, like, she's black, Indian, Italian, French. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're all just a cultural mix. Mm -hmm. And so, that's just what I chose to associate with as, like, a black woman. Mm -hmm. And one of my other sisters would be like, well, it's discrediting every other mix that we are by just saying you're a black woman. So like everybody, even we grew up the same. We, my mom is still the same values in both of us. And she still has a completely different trajectory of where she decides to speak about it and how she talks about it. Yeah. So you just, I mean, I just don't, I don't know. I can't. Yeah. No, I mean, I definitely, no, I hear you. I mean, it's just, everybody has their own experience and yeah. I just feel like, but I'm glad that you speak up for yours because there are a lot of people. I even read in some of the DMs when I was looking for an advice segment. A lot of people were coming there and saying, like, we appreciate you. We love yeah. you. Thank you for speaking up for us. Because a lot of people do feel that they don't have an identity and they're mm -hmm. trying to, like, what you said earlier, they want someone to feel like I'm here, like, right. just to see me, basically. And <clears throat> I feel like the other day, like, when all of the Twitter stuff was, like, kind of at its peak, I kind of had, like, a moment where I just kind of broke down. And I just was like, why is this happening again? Like, I already addressed all of this. I've shown my father. I've shown my grandparents. I've debunked the receipts and the rumors and all mm -hmm. that. And, like, I just feel like God or the universe or whatever is, like, pushing me to use my voice to speak up for this issue because it is an issue and it's not fair and it's not right. And I don't believe I don't believe in colorism and I don't believe in racism like in any form. And I just don't think I that do. is. Huh? I do. What do you mean? I mean, oh, believe. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm, you saying it don't exist? No. Oh, you're saying you don't believe it from the... I don't believe that people should be colorist or oh, racist. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. I was, I was like, what? Like, I was no, like, it's I, a real thing. OK. Yeah, I know it's real. Um. <laughs> No, I just don't believe that anybody should be racist or colorist. And I feel like, especially in the black community, the black community knows firsthand. Yeah, that's what's weird to me. Firsthand too. how it feels to be attacked for your race, for the mm -hmm. color of your skin. If you look too black, if you don't look black enough. So why is it that it's sad to say, and I hate to say it, but this is the only community that attacks me for this this is the only people that makes a joke out of it who drags me for it mm -hmm. who picks at me for it and I'm like I don't understand it because it's like you know firsthand what that feels like like why are you and then it's it, it frustrates me too because it's like black comes in every shade don't it I thought it came in every shade mm -hmm. so when black comes in every shade and you mix it with a white person you probably going to get somebody that looks like me. My mm. mom is a was born blonde, blue blue eyes, white as a freaking moon. What you think is going to happen? <laughs> like I'm sorry, but like I really get frustrated because mm. it's like do I have to do the chocolate milk trick with y'all? Do I need to pour some chocolate in a glass and pour some milk in a glass and show you guys what happens? Like I just don't understand. It's upsetting, it's hurtful, and it's like it makes me feel like I don't know, just frustrated. It makes me it makes me feel frustrated. Are you on your phone? You should take this out. My retainer? Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Because I'm hearing it. I know it's fine. Y'all have my retainer in. Oh, so. we could have edited that out. 
No, it's fine. That's what I was thinking about. What do you? you no, I was looking at my phone because I was like, I wonder, like thirty more minutes, you could speak without a retainer, and that's what. No, it's fine. Was. Um, yeah, I can understand it being frustrating. I don't know. I just, I mean. Yeah, it's just frustrating. It's frustrating, and I do think it's unfair, and I, it is sad to see you continuously go through that. And I, I did. That's why I did feel I did a, me my apology because I was like, I know that this. You do have this troll mentality where you want to get back at people. I mean, mm -hmm. where you want to like, when they go low, you go lower, which I, I honestly agree with mm -hmm. because I feel like they shouldn't fuck with you. But I know that it does hurt your feelings. And I know that it is a lot sometimes to take on. And like, it is easy to just be like, ignore this shit, like just do it. But it's constantly, I can't say that when someone's constantly coming for you. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And you constantly, I don't want to, it just feels so weird to like, where you have to defend yourself consistently over something that's just like i know it's facts right no. why the fuck are y'all bothering me yeah no i know i mean i'm just i don't know i'm just done you're done yeah. so this is so y'all it came here from behind the likes this is winter's last time responding to anything y'all have to say negative about her motherfucking race because yeah. she's our black queen <laughs> anyways um yeah so what's been going on this week that's how you want to end it? Anyways. Yeah, it is. Nothing. Nothing's been going on with you? Mm -mm. Nothing going on in your life? No. For the last week? Nothing at all? No, nope, nothing. You have nothing going on? Because I don't on. like the way that ended. I'm, t I'm tired of talking about it, honestly. Yeah. And I feel like every time I'm talking about it, you're just like, mm, yeah, well, I don't know. Nothing about that. So I can't really have a conversation with myself. Mm, but so. I feel like I... Said what I no, said. Yeah, and I, there's you know? nothing else we can talk about. Okay. So. Do you not like the way that my response was to it? Do you feel like, what do you, what do you, what do you want from my response? I don't really, I just feel like you're just like, you're, first of all, you're making a joke out of it more so. I feel like you're making a joke out of it and it's not a joke. Okay. I can see how you feel that way. But are you sad right now? Are you about yeah. to cry? I am. I'm really, I'm done. <laughs> Are you about to go? For what? Are you are you serious? Don't wait, winner, don't leave. Wait, wait, don't leave. Hello? For you too? Yes. Okay, we're back. I just left the studio, as everybody could see, crying. So, yeah, let's just talk about that. I feel like, um, obviously, I just got up and left and was crying because I just feel like this is, like, a really, it's really a hard topic for me to talk about. And even though I come on the internet and, like, all of that, I'm very, um, I'm very strong on the internet. I respond to this shit with like I troll back I talk shit back I don't let it phase me online but like it really is hard like it's a really hard thing to deal with it's just really hard to like constantly be attacked online my my address literally got leaked from this my social security number got leaked because of this I literally get death threats all the time and like shy doesn't I mean, I guess this time Shy doesn't know how bad it affects me because I'm just constantly like not being emotional about it because I just feel like I really don't want to be a victim, but it's just, it's hard to talk about. And I just basically left because I felt like I just, I just felt like I was being dismissed and I felt like I just wanted to change the subject and it just didn't go well. So that's how I feel. I appreciate you for coming. I'm, I'm, for one, I want to say I'm sorry that you felt that way. I never want to dismiss your feelings ever. But the way I joke with you just now is the way that I would joke with you at home. Mm -hmm. And to, to make it lighter, to make you feel better, to make it not as deep or as serious. And I didn't realize the severity of how you felt this time. So that's why it was like, what's going on? Like, mm -hmm. I was a little just... Confused. I was caught off guard because I would joke with you. I would say these things. I would be like, fuck them. Fuck this. You know what I'm saying? So like to see how hurt you are kind of hurts me. And I'm just, I, it doesn't, 
I don't mean to be dismissive. I don't mean to be, I'm just not, I, this is just, mm-hmm. I can't explain it. I just feel it's uncharted territory for me because I don't see you like this normally. You're never mm-hmm. really crying. You're not sad. You be. You really are. You give me the same persona that you give to the internet sometimes. I know that it does affect you, but mm-hmm. you, you'll give me the same, fuck them. They just some hating ass bitches. But so I'm just, I don't know. I can't. Mm-hmm. I love you and I don't want to ever make you feel like you are alone when you're really not. I'm right here. I'm supposed to be that. Mm-hmm. So I am sorry that you felt like I was dismissing We just it. talked about this on the phone also before I walked back in. So I'm just telling them that because they don't know. But I just feel like with, yeah, like me and her do crack jokes about it. Like I even, I, I bought you a balloon. I bought you a car the last time. And I said what I, when I did. No, I, I know. So I'm just like, I'm, I was just, I'm like, I'm looking, thinking back on everything. And I'm like, when you talk, when you're doing this and I'm like, I was doing this, but I was just, I'm like, I don't know. I, I didn't realize like the extent of how, I just didn't, no. I don't know. And I feel horrible. I don't know. I don't. It's fine. I mean, I just think like, okay, when it's me and her, obviously we do crack jokes. Like she'll say things like, oh yeah, my black queen. And you know, cause it's funny. It is funny. Like when we're home and we're texting and we say all this out of pocket stuff to like make light of the matter. But you know, to me, it's like when it's hundreds of thousands of people, it's like, it's not funny. It gives them, cause that's what people say to me trying to be funny. You know, like they'll say things like my Nubian queen, my black queen. And like, they say things to like be sarcastic. I even say that about myself though. I know, I know that. And when we do that, it's fine. Like when we do that, I think just in this moment, it's Mm. like, it's just heavy. Like it's just a heavy time. Like, you know, like it's just like a serious situation. And I feel like I try to keep everything so like, politically correct and this is how it is and this is how it feels it is I'll come out you heard me I'll say it's hurtful when and I don't like showing you like you guys like or anybody how bad it hurts like I don't even know to that extent yeah and I didn't even think of it in a sense of like leaking you like doing all like I I yeah yeah so I mean I just didn't think of it in that and I I don't want you to feel that way so I just I don't know yeah, no, I mean, it's fine. She walked out saying, you think everything's a fucking joke? You know how many times know. I've been hearing that? I know, people all my life, people say that to me time. all the time. I just am weird with emotions, not emotions, but it's like, you know me, I'm a cry and crack a joke in two seconds. Yeah. I just, I, and I, the way that I react to me crying and me being sad is you t- cracking a joke. No, and also, you know, so- like, I just want to be clear so people aren't confused, like, how I felt also is, like, obviously we're here and it's all of you guys here, but, like, we're having a conversation with each other, like, yeah. you know? So it's, like, I feel like I need you to be, like, kind of listening fully to what I'm saying so that you can have a response and, like, I'm not blaming you or anything, like, if I'm looking at you and you're looking at your phone and I'm talking and I'm trying to, like, make this point and I'm, like, looking over and I'm, like, and then when it comes back to you and you're like, yeah, I mean, I just don't really know what to say. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I feel like you're not, you know, engaging with what I'm saying fully. And like, it's fine. That's going to happen. I yeah. under, Like sometimes when we have the podcast, like sometimes I'll tune out a little bit and be like, tune back in. Like, yeah. you know, you have to have this conversation. It's just like, it's just a heavy topic for me. And I like I said, I don't like being a victim. I don't want to be some bitch who comes on here like, I'm a victim of cyberbullying, even though I do get yeah. cyberbullied. Like, I don't want to give these people on the internet like that sense of power. Like, oh yeah, we finally got her. We finally mm-hmm. broke her. So I just come at it like, like I'm a Taurus. I'm stubborn as fuck. Like, yeah. even if I'm, even if you have broken me, I'm not going to show you that I'm broken. Like, that's just how I am. And my mindset is, I've been through so much shit in my life for y'all to think that you could ever break me is ridiculous as fuck. So it's embarrassing to me when I show emotion or like cry or anything like that. But I just, it's just a raw moment. So yeah, things happen. I still love you. It's okay. And I was literally just listening and I still don't have any, I don't know what to, I lit, I'm just, I'm taking it all in, Winter, and I apologize if you feel like I wasn't giving you my full attention or my full. No, it's fine. Honestly, it's really fine. I just... It's not because you you cry. You're I'm crying, and having... I'm and I and I know that it is a lot I'm of other things that you're resentment. dealing with, 
and yeah. that I'm, yeah. Also, yeah, it's like other shit that I'm going yeah. through in my life. Like I'm going through other things and then it's like everything else that goes on in my life emotionally has to get put on pause because blogs are posting me. My address yeah. is getting leaked. People are showing up to my house. I'm getting attacked. I'm getting called a liar. I'm literally getting death threats. I'm getting berated 24-7. I'm the butt of every joke on Twitter. And it's just like okay, hold on. You like, I don't even have time to process other things that I have going on. It's just like, okay, bitch, just be strong. Get through this storm. It's just another storm that's going to pass. But like the, the storm hurt, the storm is hard. It's fucking hard. And it's like, it's just not a good feeling. But at the end of the day, I feel like we have to realize that we're all just human beings and in no way, shape or form, is this type of harassment okay? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm an Aquarius, y'all. These emotions do not sit well with me. This is I'm, really how she is, too. I, I can't help it. It's like when my friends cry, I'm going to be like this. I'm going to have one little finger like, I love you. I'm here for you. Like, I can't, I'm i sorry. I'm uh, really trying. I will show my love I'm not in multiple mad at ways. You. I'm not mad at but you. But I don't want like, you to Obviously, like, I was mad in the moment, but I'm not mad at yeah. you. Like, I know who you no, are. No, but I, I know. But it makes me sad that you feel it. And I don't ever want you to feel like I'm any, like that I will not ride tenfold for you, support you, be there for you in any way, shape, or form. Like, and mm -hmm. that is what really hurts my feelings. And I just yeah. don't want that to ever. No, and I don't think You know, that. so I don't want that to ever be a thing that you think that you wouldn't. I will beat every bitch up. Period. Every bitch <laughs> up. And that is a dead honest fact if yeah. they were to ever fuck with you. So I just, I... To me, I just want to, I'm always try to make light. And I yeah. just, and I just hate that I was just. It's just a heavy topic. It's just yeah, a hard thing to talk about. I just hate that I was about. just perceived so, like, to you. And mm -hmm. I don't ever want you to think of me that way. So it's just, you know. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, whatever. Oh, shut the fuck up. Because. What? I'm saying it's fine. Like, I don't know what else to say. It's not fine. It is fine. Like, you don't have to explain yourself. Have you me. don't have to overly apologize. Get away from me. Ew. I'm sorry. I love you. Give I me a kiss. kiss. No. Fuck Give me a kiss. Lesbian. I almost called you the D word and got canceled. <laughs> Anyways, guys. Um, yeah, this is your panties. Stop. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we're going to wrap this episode. Um, this is just a real raw episode. This is just a raw episode. I'm canceling all this shit out. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Uh, it's just a raw episode y'all but thanks for tuning in hopefully you know y'all stop being a bitch and being mean and mm -hmm. being trolls and saying this negative shit because at the end of the day it does affect us it even affects me because how it affects my friend and so it's just literally just if you don't have nothing nice to say we've said it before don't say nothing at all